I have always thought life around Lake Magadi starts and ends with soda ash mining. But after today's visit, I am now convinced that that is not even half of what this salty destination is all about. So, hot and alkaline. Its corrosive water can dehydrate you to death. Many animals, including humans, can survive in it for long. But of course, there are those that live in the lake itself, flamingos. This, my friend, is Lake Magadi. Guys, look at it. It's fast. Eh? Unakuja tu unaka hapa usiku na lala. Joto mingi. There, the soda ash mining factory in Lake Magadi. After several years of reading and hearing about uh, soda ash mining factory in Lake Magadi, finally I can see it here. As I go down, I can see the factory there. It looks magnificent, it looks um, dominating. It's like it dominates the landscape here in Lake Magadi. This is the lake that you normally hear where soda ash is mined from primary school, secondary school and um, uh, reading newspapers, journals and watching documentaries. I've heard about this lake here. It is quite an interesting lake as far as the Kenyan economy is concerned because it is one place where soda ash is mined. It's the only place actually where soda ash is mined in Kenya. And you can see here, the landscape looks magnificent around it. Um, they would, some say epic sceneries. That is what you can see. And that is Lake Magadi. Soda ash is one of Kenya's most important export commodities. Tata Chemical, you see the factories here. But the road to this otherwise marvelous place is simply pathetic. It is narrow and full of potholes, a driver's nightmare. <laughs> Many prefer using the train railway cross when visiting Magadi town. Very beautiful. Look at it. But by driving down to Magadi, I am able to take you along as you suffer the ever-changing scenery and landscape. There is a mixture of houses. We have uh, semi-permanent. You can see Manyatas. Yeah, this one is a Maasai village. A short documentary on this road will be published soon. So the ash mining. Lake Magadi is among the few places on earth where trona, a naturally occurring mineral that contains sodium carbonate compounds, can be found at the surface. It occupies a trough in the Great Rift Valley of East Africa. Rainfall in and around Rift Valley drains underground and is heated geothermally. The hot water dissolves chemical compounds of sodium that occur in the underground rock strata. This one is a, you see here, it's a spring. And the solution comes to the surface in the form of hot, mildly alkaline springs which can be found all around the edge of the lake. Magadi's high temperatures and long sunny days cause the solution to concentrate by evaporation. This eventually 
gives rise to more trona. Just like that, the trona deposit in Lake Magadi is constantly renewing itself by natural means. So you see, that is soda ash. Did you understand anything here? Worry not. Let's go to the springs of Magadi and see the source of the lake and soda ash. Sasa ikitoka hapa, unaona bila iko clean hapa. Ikifika pale mbele inakuwa red. Sasa ndio unaasa kukauka inakuwa wanaasa kutoa hiyo soda ash. Unataka kuniambia hiyo ndio source? Hiyo Lake Magadi. Yeah, yeah, hapa ndio source. Hapa ndio inatokea maji. Yeah, yeah. Lake Magadi haina muto ama Hakuna muto, ni hitu. Hii spring ndio inapeleka Lake Magadi maji. It's a long drive through the town and the grasslands. This drive makes me realize that Lake Magadi is stuck in the middle of a stunning, albeit scorching wilderness. We have no guide, physical or Google map, to direct us. The mobile phone network here is too weak. <laughs> the security guard at the entry gate only told us to follow this car. I later came to know this was Eric Itui from Matasia. Unlike us who are here to learn about the hot springs phenomena and where soda ash comes from, he had come all the way for a warm dive. The vast area belongs to Tata Chemicals Magadi. This is Lake Magadi. As you can see there, those are flamingos. And far there, that is Tata Chemicals, the company that mines soda ash. It is Africa's largest soda ash manufacturer and the second largest producer of soda ash in the world. It owns more than 220,000 hectares and the resourceful Lake Magadi is in the heart of this chunk of land. The township you see here is actually an island inside the salty lake and it is accessed by road and rail via causeways. This one is a town. You can see they have a town here. So this one is a... This town is made up of mostly employees of Tata Chemicals. You see Duka Hill Road. And they have named the streets. It is Shompole Road. Shompole Road. And they have signs, stopover signs, crossings, zebra crossings here, for example. There is hospital road, so they have a hospital in here. So you can see Magadi Hospital. There is Magadi Hospital, there is a VCT center there. Ah. So this is a town. How are you? Now we are looking for the hot springs of Lake Magadi. We have just passed through uh, Tata Chemicals or Tata Chemical Limited. And you can see here is a community. That one looks like a school. And uh, we are trying to look for the springs. This one is called, the school is called Nakishomi Primary School. And we are looking for the hot springs. The place where we are seeing something that looks like a pool of water is just a few meters ahead of us and probably that is where we are looking for that is the place we are looking for so now this lake is actually confusing me now 
because we like, it's like we've gone round and round the lake so we get several patches of the lake like now you see this one here and it's awesome but but this place is very hot i don't know if i'm the only one feeling it this is the southernmost lake in the kenyan rift valley it is 32 kilometers long and three kilometers wide It is the most mineral rich of the soda lakes. It occupies the lowest level of the vast rift trough and its bed consists almost entirely of solid or semi-solid soda. It acts as a sink for seasonal streams. You may be asking where Eric disappeared to. He is no longer with us. Let me take you a few kilometers back. Here, he took the wrong route and we were following him only for us to realize the route he took could only lead us to the airstrip. So we reversed and took the correct turn. Remember, up to this point, we do not know Eric and so we don't have his telephone number to alert him. Ero? Yes? Hot Springs Nivi? Nivi. Eh. The views here are breathtaking, especially in the evening. Well, the search for the hot springs has been quite a journey. We have moved around the lake. We are not yet there, but I'm seeing someone. Looks like a, a Maasai guy. Ero? Suba, iko na mna gani? Wewe inaitwa nani? Mimi naitwa David Walentiti. Sasa mimi naitwa Sikolia. Eh. Enoch. Yeah. Natafuta hii hot spring. Yeah. Nimezunguka? Yeah. Ni mbali sana bwana. Oh, hot spring ni hapa. Hapa ndio junction. Hii inaenda Shompole. Inaenda Shompole. Hii barabara inaenda Shompole. Oho. Inaenda hot spring. Hap ni ni mbali gani? Hapa iko karibu kutoka hapa mpaka hot spring ni 2 km. So na na zaenda? Nataka kuona hiyo kitu kabisa. Ah, you go carry me. Ah, you swim for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, 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 yeah, yeah. Guys, look at it. It's fast. Eh. Hey. I'm just feeling heat. A lot of heat. and it's not as if it's white. I'm not going to go back to the valley. Do you want to go back? Yes. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, it's going. Hey, watch out. That's a Majimoto in moto. Imagine moto. Ah, no, 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 toka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine moto. Eh, 40 degrees. Moto kabisa aki a mungu. Na toka hapo. So I hear this one is 40 degrees Celsius. That is how hot it is. It's very warm. Um, is it warm or hot? In spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah,
ile gani ile ile pale mahali kuna mahali kuna flamingo sasa flamingo wanapenda kwa ni majimoto ama wamekuja kula hii algae oh hiyo green hii green ha 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 flamingos tend to live in inhospitable relatively remote wetlands lacks so alkaline in ph it could burn human flesh off the bones within this water however is an untapped resource of food like crustaceans cyanobacteria and diatom algae all this can be dangerous to many other animals as they contain toxic chemicals called carotenoids so how are flamingos able to eat these foods without falling seriously ill thanks to their specialized metabolism the birds are able to process these harmful chemicals in their liver breaking them down into functional components and pigments it's these pigments that eventually stain a flamingo's feathers and that is not all their skin mucous membranes egg yolks and even fat are stained pink and similar colors like pink that is why flamingos appear pink in color at birth flamingos are usually white in color off to the second spring diti says it is bigger and better since we want to see the springs at close range we have to remove shoes it is at this moment that i realized how scorching hot this place was david nditi who is a ranger here has placed rocks that enable people to move otherwise the algae in the water is too sticky and slippery it could easily lead to accidents the natural basin on the ground with bubbling hot waters was our highlight here the water coming from the springs is heated geothermally The hot water dissolves chemical compounds of sodium that occur in the underground rock strata and the solution is what you are seeing coming to the surface in form of hot mildly alkaline spring. Now this is where I'm told it's extremely hot and indeed it is very hot. So this water here this is the spring as you can see water is coming out boiling actually very hot but let me tell you one thing do you understand that the great rift valley when when we are talking about the stretch and has 13000 megawatts of electricity and kenya has 10000 10000 megawatts of that that 13 megawatts of geothermal now That is why you see many hot springs within the Rift Valley. This one here in Magadi, there is Bogoria, there is Silale Hills, and this is a great potential in terms of geothermal extraction. And that is why Kenya has been pushing to achieve its potential. Right now we are yet I'm told that we are less than 2000 megawatts and we have a potential of 10000. And can you imagine if we can just extract half of the potential that we have that is 10000 then it means we have 5000 megawatts of electricity these hot springs are a testament to what lies underneath our soils the water is believed to have medicinal value and can cure ailments such as skin rashes pimples and acne 
It can also eliminate dry skin conditions and also helps in strengthening the bones. Tumesha yona watu wa wakona ugonjwa ya ngozi na wanaogelea imaji na akapona. Eh. Ina clear kabisa. Ina kuwa clear kabisa. Ikiwa na shida ya mwili kama tuseme ile mashilingi shilingi inaingia kwa kwa watoto na kuwa na pimples na shida ya joints unakuja unaingilia hapa unasikia tu moto sasa ile unaingia dakika kidogo umesoya hot water massage wasn't a bad idea for me and Eric who finally found his way to the springs. The soup-like solution was easy to feel. But this water is so alkaline that it can dehydrate any living thing to the point of death. So having a long warm bath is not advisable. Ask Eric. He stayed in the natural pool for quite a while and his body was on the receiving end. I, I saw you see me. Which I regret. It was very hot. Yeah, that thing was hot. I think I did a knockout on my, let's say, my blood was not working optimally. You had to sit down. I had to sit down, drink a lot of water, for us to do this interview. But 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 when we are, when you are going in, how was? When you were in that water, how was the feeling? Because you stayed there for a long time. It must have been uh, some kind of therapeutic or whatever. Yes, feeling. it was therapeutic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm waiting to see if the, the outcome will be what uh, Nditi has said about. Yes. Uh, I'm still looking at you to <laughs> confirm it's true or not. <laughs> so one week from now, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> if it's true, come back. I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the feeling was... It was phenomenal. Before going into the pool, it is advisable to drink a lot of water. Once inside the lake and heated by Magadi's high temperatures and long sunny days, the solution becomes concentrated by evaporation, eventually giving rise to more trona. That is how the trona deposit in Lake Magadi is constantly renewing itself by natural means. Inaenda mpaka huko kwa factory. Sasa ikitoka hapa unaona bila iko clean hapa ikifika pale mbele inakuwa red Sasa ndio inaasa kukauka inakuwa wanaasa kutoa hiyo soda sh Unataka kuniambia hii ndio sauce ya Lake Magadi Yeah yeah hapa ndio sauce hapa ndio inatokea maji Yeah yeah Lake Magadi haina muto ama Hakuna muto ni hii tu hii spring ndio inapeleka Lake Magadi maji I feel it's uh, it's not yet marketed it's uh quite an underground uh, tourist destination. Mostly people are looking at Nairobi Snake Park. Uh, there is a Nairobi National Park. I believe people should just do a, a random road trip. Several people come here, look at the, the scenic place, uh, do a swimming, uh, also interact with the Maasai here. They are very jolly people. Well, I am now convinced that the exploration of Lake Magadi, a detached part of the main lake, should be everyone's dream. My name is Anoxicolia and I am the Kenyan historian.